Hello, everybody, and welcome to the next episode of the Scarlet Keys Rerank that I'm doing here with chat. It's been a year and a bit since we've done this previously, where we ranked all the Scarlet Keys cards uh, before, and now we're revisiting them. This is part two. We've done this once before. There's going to be a link to the video in the video description, which you can find down below. But uh, otherwise, it's really simple. We're going to be looking back at the ratings we did last year, myself and chat, and then I am going to rate it on a scale from 1 to 5, and chat is also going to rate it as a scale of 1 to 5. If you don't know what chat is, I stream a lot of these videos on Twitch, so it's a place that you can interact with me, ask questions, get yelled at when, I, when you say something I disagree with, and it's a great time for everybody involved. But we're going to dive in and get this show going, with which is probably one of the most controversial investigators as we were getting set up uh, and learning about the Scarlet Keys. And that's our boy, uh, Carson Sinclair. So Carson Sinclair, <laughs> chat was not happy. Chat was not happy with Carson Sinclair. You guys only gave him a three last year. I gave him a four. Uh, because I thought that his ability was pretty good. I actually, so this was my biggest um, criticism of Carson Sinclair last year. And I think it's still true to me today. I do wish he had four brain. Mostly just because I feel like, unfortunately, uh, with Carson Sinclair. Uh, Chris, uh, Chris Narrowskin, thank you so much for the... Um, uh, the uh, the subscription and welcome to the Golden Table and using Twitch Prime. Much appreciated. Thank you for being you and thank you for being awesome. Um, his ability is, I wish that he had four brain, mostly just because his, um, so much of his deck needs to go to soak, right? It's one of those things where unfortunately a lot of his deck needs to go to making sure that he lives because he's very fragile during the mythos phase. Um, playing him is actually super fun. I like playing uh, Carson. I think for people who say he's boring, I think, unfortunately, my response to that is you might be boring. Because there's a lot of things you can do with Carson. There's a lot of different directions that you can take him um, that is, like, very interesting. And he's also, like, very powerful. Bryn loves Carson. Bryn has, like, Bryn has a great time playing Carson. And I don't blame him. Carson is a, a very fun, very good investigator. And I think I'm, overall, I'm happy with my 4.0 rating. I don't think I need to change it. I think, like, I was going to say, like, maybe a 4.5. But I think that overall, I'm quite happy with my thoughts on him last year. And I think I, after sitting on it more, I'd give him, like, probably, like, an A to an A+. Plus. Um, I think he's cool, though. I think I think he's a, he's a good design. I just wish that he had four brain. I still feel that in my heart of hearts, just because I think that he would be, I just feel like he would be a little bit more interesting in terms of like not needing to require as much of his deck to be about keeping him alive. Uh, so uh, looking at it, I give him a four to a four, chat gave him a 3.0 to a 3.9 so an upgrade of almost a whole point for Carson Sinclair. At the end of the video, I'll also see where our biggest differences for our votes were, which is always fun. Okay, next up, we got custom modifications. So this is, I think there was one, there might have, no, I think everything about the Seeker, there's, there's a lot of classes have one customizable card. Uh, so custom modifications, three cost event, it's attached to a firearm asset you control, limit one per asset. When you reveal a non-autofail chaos token from attacking, uh, while attacking with the attached asset, exhaust custom modifications and cancel that chaos token, return to the bag, and reveal a new one. I'll be honest, um, I feel as though that... <laughs> I feel as though I forget often that this card actually has the ability on the card. It's usually just like, for me, it's what's on the customizable card. So let's get to that. Notch Sight. You perform an attack with an attached asset against an enemy engaged in another investigator and fail. You deal no damage. 
Extended stock, you get plus two fist while attacking with attached asset. Counterbalance, after you attach an upgrade card other than custom modifications to attached asset, draw one card. Leather grip, custom modification gets minus one cost and gains fast. Play only during your turn. Extended magazine, after ammo is spent from or placed on attached asset by another event, place one ammo on attached asset. And quick several bullets, if you succeed by three or more while attacking with attached asset, this attack deals plus one damage. Uh, this card's really fun. I like it a lot. I've played it in like Mark decks like pretty much every time. I think it makes, there's actually I think a good number of cards in Scarlet Keys that makes fighting with guns feel less bad. Um, and I think that it did a very good job at like giving you some more juice for your firearms. I like extended stock. Um, I like counterbalance. I like leather grip. I like extended magazine. I like quicksilver bullets. This is actually probably one of, um, probably one of the most just like blanket happy with all the upgrades and paths for custom modifications. I think this is a great customizable card and I don't think it's like gangbusters, but I think I am going to give it a 3.5. So I think I, I underrated it slightly last year, uh, because... I think I just, like, wasn't happy with what guns were. And I think that this was... It needed to be played to see, like, how using guns would work. Uh, anyways, you guys gave it a 4.1 overall. Uh, which I think is pretty fair as well. I think chat is naturally going to skew higher than me, just generally. Um, but I think that, yeah, I think that's pretty sick. It's a good, cool card. Cool card. All right, on to Obsidian Bracelet. Wow. Okay. All right, Obsidian Bracelet. Three cost, item charm, takes up the hand slot. Excuse me, soaks for three and three. Obsidian Bracelet may only be assigned damage and or horror dealt by treachery effects. Obsidian Bracelet may be assigned damage and or horror dealt to other investigators at your location. So, um, this card is I love it in Carson mostly because you uh <laughs> you're not using your hand slots for a lot of things you can build with runic axe I know you can do it I know you can you don't need to tell me that um but like most of the time this is just kind of like um for that uh, however I don't enjoy playing them outside of that I don't think I like the card I would never feel happy playing the card and I'm actually pretty happy with my 2.0 rating. I'm only playing these in Carson Sinclair because hands are a hand slot is just such an important slot. I mean, realistically, like every slot is super important in this game. Um, but I'm gonna be giving this one a two. I think I'm very happy with past Justin's rating on it. And chat, you're gonna give it a 2.3. So you're down a bit. You're down a bit on that one. But, you know, I understand it. The card was exciting. I think the card's, like, good in the right deck. But I think, like, as a whole, the card doesn't really hype me up. It kind of just... I look at it, and I'm like, okay, yeah, you're here too, and that's neat. But, like, I'm never happy to play the card unless I'm Carson Sinclair. And even then, three resources is, is a good chunk. And I'd rather just, like, you know, play Gurish. <laughs> uh. Okay, what we got next? Bolus. Bolus. Okay, Bolus is a one-cost event. It's a tactic. Chad, you guys gave this a 4.2 last year. Holy heck. You like the Bolus. All right. Evade. Attempt to evade using fist instead of foot. If you succeed and the enemy is non-elite, attach Bolus to it. Attached enemy gets minus one evade value. After attach enemy moves, exhaust it. I mean, like, the effect on this card is nice. Being able to evade with your fist instead of your foot, I don't think is, um, is, uh, something that's really sick. No, it's Bolas. It's Nickel Bolas. That's what the card's short for. Nickel Bolas actually threw the Bolas. That's why it's called Nickel Bolas. Um, I do think that it's, like, the evade effect, to be able to evade with your fist and a foot instead of a pin in, in a pinch is really nice. But I think that... I don't think it's really worth the slot in your deck the majority of the time. Um, I'm going to give it 
I'm, I'm, I'm happy with my 2.5. I'm happy with the 2.5, so I'm honestly just going to stick with it. I've tried to play this card a few times, and I've never really been particularly happy with it. Um, it always just felt like... I always just felt like I was, like, just slightly... I don't know, I just, like, there was never... I'd rather just kill the enemy, right? I, like, that's the thing. Like, even, like, with, with Penny Penny Pasta, I think this one is better in higher player counts, actually. I can see that being true, but I also see that in higher player counts, you're gonna have, like, the ability to just kill enemies even more efficiently, right? Just kill the hell out of, uh... I mean, yeah, it does, it does seem really good against the Broods. <laughs> that, I will give it that. So, I'm gonna give it a 2.5 again this year, and chat, you dropped it down to a 3 from a 4.2 last year. So what I'm learning is chat, you guys, you love the hype. Bring it to the Forgotten Age. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I agree. But also like, there's a lot of tools that you can bring to the Forgotten Age. And this one, the, the Nickel Bolus doesn't really move the needle for me. Breach the door. Hey, probably the card that I think I underrated the most probably one of them i gave it a 2.5 that was very wrong this one was in my um cards that i were, were wrong about in scarlet keys and i'll, I'll wear this one like a badge of honor I'm, I'm learning a lot i'm still learning about arkham and this is one of them two cost event breach the door insight tactic police test fist one if you succeed attach breach the door to your location with one resource on it for each point you succeed by as leads reduce the attached location shroud by one for each lead on breach the door um card's good card is like sick uh re shroud reduction is really good it allows you to like help other people out but also it can help yourself out i've used this card to great effect um uh notice notably in the dream eaters in um what's the first scenario card waking nightmare when in that one room where you have to like you can three action to investigate four times and i breached the door i breached the door there to um And then I used it as Mark to just get a bunch of clues off of it at testing at zero. It's very nice. It has a lot of places where it's really good. Chad, you guys gave it a four. I'm going to go up to a 3.5. Um, I, I, I was definitely underrating this. Both this and Map the Area. I think that those cards are just like kind of just good. And I completely undervalued them on my initial assessment of the cards. But I think that yeah, I think that I'm happy with a 3.5 for this. It's very nice. It's a very nice card. Bestow Resolve. I played this one in a Carson deck recently, and it, my favorite part about it is that you commit a perception to a test that's testing fist, and everyone's like, how are you cheating? And I'm like, baby, I'm not cheating. Bestow Recall Resolve. Two cost, two experience. Takes up a spell slot. It's a ritual asset. Uses four charges. As a lightning bolt, during a skill test performed by an investigator location or a connecting location, spend one charge. Commit to a non-weakness, uh, commit a non-weakness skill card from your hand um, to that skill test, treating all of its skill icons as if they were wild. Um, there's a lot of fun things that you can do with it, like Eureka. <laughs> um, there's a lot of cool things that you can, like, a lot of cool skills I'm that you can take advantage of. I think, actually, it's also not that bad to just treat what card you need as um an unexpected courage if needed but i think most of the time unfortunately i don't think this card is worth it unless you're trying to like exploit it in some way uh the effect is nice but it's not i think i did overrate it i think i am going to drop it down to a three i don't think it's on the level of the 3.5 that i gave it last year I think that it's kind of just, it's kind of just there. And even in the decks where I was really happy with it, um, like where I would really want it, it's still not like super juicy. Chat, I will say you guys nailed it. You guys gave it a 3.8 last year and you're giving it a 3.8 this year. 
round of applause for everybody in chat land because that's great if you guys like especially as a a, a block of voters <laughs> where i take your average score being able to hit exactly uh the same rating is super impressive so nice job and good good call on that card we got guard dog all right chat we got to talk to you guys <laughs> uh card's good I don't think card is 4.7 good. So guard dog is a three cost, two experience ally creature asset. Soaks for forward two. As a lightning bolt exhaust guard dog, engage an enemy at your location, that enemy attacks you. As a reaction, when an enemy attack deals damage and or horror to guard dog, deal one damage to the attacking enemy. I think this is a really nice upgrade. Um, reality is though, um, I don't think I ever need it over regular guard dog. Uh, so much so that like the experience is just like, I'm just paying for more soak, you know? Um, it's one of those things where there's not really like an exciting home for it. Right? Like it's, it's like, I don't know. I think I overrated this card a little bit. I kind of want to give it a three just because, like, the effect is good. But you know what's also good? Just Guard Dog. Right? Like, I think level zero Guard Dog is also just, like, a really good card. Fast action engage is very nice. I mean, I do think this card, if it was, if it was our other Holy Rosary and this turned into a survivor, uh, I mean, I think there'd be homes for it. I'd play it in like, <laughs> I'd play it in uh, Kelvin. I'd probably play it in Silas. Obviously, Daniela loves the hell out of this card. If if it was in Survivor. Yeah, I don't know. I just feel like where it is right now, like, the card's good. The card is good. But, like, I'm just happy with regular guard dog the majority of the time. This damn dog is making me really think harder than I thought. I think if I could give it a score of 3.25, I would. But I can't. Those are against my personal rules. I work on a 10 point scale, not a 20 point scale. I think I'm, it's, it's Halloween. Um, I'm going to give it a 3.5. I'm going to give it the same rating. I think the card itself is just very good. I just think it's lacking like a spot where you really kind of like want to play it over guard dog zero. Place with Nyella who'd free engage with Runic Axe anyway. Yeah, but I mean, like, what you're describing right now is, like, something that you can just, like, do with <laughs> a riot whistle, you know? Um, I, I think the reality is, is just that, like, I just don't think general. I think for Guardians especially, everything else is worth more experience in your upgrades than Guard Dog. I think Guard Dog is just like... I think the card's good, but I just think that Guard Dog Zero is, like, as good. You know, I think that's the problem. Right? Guard Dog Zero is very good. Guard Dog Two is also very good. But, like, not enough for it to move the needle in the grand term, uh, grand scheme of things. Five triggers of one damage instead of three. Yeah, congratulations. You can do math. <laughs> it's, it's, I just like, like, it's too experience. I think it's just like a bit too, like, I just think it's like not worth it in comparison to what else you want your guardian experience to be on. I would rather buy better economy 
and stick with my guard dog zero longer than buy guard dog two. And I think we just need to like, you gotta just respect that. When you're like evaluating cards, you need to look at that and be like that. You know, I'm going down to a three. I am. Congratulations, chat. You guys trying to defend guard dog actually caused me to ruin my Halloween spirit. We're going down to a three on this guy. I think the card's good, but I think it um, actually doesn't do enough to make it that much better than guard dog. So I think it's actually, for me, a little bit worse than Guard Dog Zero, which is strange to say, but I think that's the case. Chad, you guys went to a 3.9 on that one. You went to a 3.9. From 4.7 to 3.9. Good card, though. Guard Dog, I mean, I'm not trying to say Guard Dog 2 is bad. I think Guard Dog 2 is, is a very good card. Just not as good as I thought it was. I thought it was going to be. Handcuffs 2. I gave this a 2.5 last year. Okay, let's get a poll going for chat. We spent a lot of time on Guard Dog there. Let's see if we can just blur through handcuffs. So I give it a 2.5. One cost, two experience. It's fast, which is really nice. As an action, if handcuffs is not attached to an enemy, evade. Use only on a humanoid enemy. The evasion attempt uses fist instead of the foot. If you succeed, remove all doom from the just evaded enemy and attach handcuffs to it. If the attached enemy is non-elite, it cannot ready and doom cannot be placed on it. So the difference, I believe, is cost. Uh, it's not fast, and I think it does not remove doom, right? I think those are the changes. Nice changes. Nice just general changes to the card. Um, I think this one kind of sits with Handcuffs Zero, where most of the time, what people are using Handcuffs Zero for, have, would use Handcuffs Two for, I think Handcuffs Zero kind of just already does. I think the upgrade is a nice upgrade, but I don't think the upgrade is needed but if you buy it later in the campaign you're gonna be happy with it but i think i'm gonna stick with my 2.5 and chat you're pretty close to me on this one uh you went down to a 2.7 so just like again as i said in the last video and last week when we did this i look at that if you're in like a 0.5 difference of rating you were pretty accurate i i would say i would give a, a badge of um a badge of hell yes <laughs> Uh, to your um, your rating last year, so I think overall, I think we were pretty close on handcuffs for this one. I think like it's it, it's it's a nice upgrade. All the text on the card is really good, but like with Guard Dog Two, a lot of what you want to do with handcuffs, the level zero version is going to get that done for you. Yeah. Prepared for the worst two. I feel like we're on a trend here. <laughs> this one's going to be... Uh, I'm going to say a lot of the same stuff that I've said for the last two cards here. Zero cost, two experience. Choose an investigate location. That investigator shows the top nine cards of their deck for a weapon asset and adds it to their hand or plays it, paying its resource cost, and shuffles their deck. Um, I don't think I'll take this except in Down the Rabbit Hole. Yes, 100% Astute Dunsparce, 100%. Uh, I'm going to stick with my 2.5 rating. I don't think the card's bad. But it doesn't really need to be there unless you have the cherry on top. Or, alternatively, if you're Carson Sinclair, I think this could have been a one experience upgrade and more people would play it. Like if it was only one, uh, a level one card instead of a level two card, I think more people would be happier to upgrade it because they're like, yeah, I'll save the, the time. But I think the biggest reality is that Backpack 2 exists. And Backpack 2 kind of is just the best weapon searching you can get in the game. So, like, that's just how it is. And also, unless you're building around a specific gun that you want to find, it is just easier to just put more guns in your deck now because more guns are coming out. Um, but, I mean, if someone played this, I wouldn't be upset. I just think that you would need, like... You need to upgrade a lot more in your deck before you get to prepare for the worst. But I mean, gravy upgrades are a good thing for game design and exploring the card pool like that. And of course, everything with down the rabbit hole is goes up in value.
Ever Vigilant 4. Uh, zero cost, four experience. One at a time, investigators at your location as a group may play up to four assets in total from their hands, reducing the resource cost of each by one. It's a good card. Is it a 4.5 good? Did I rate it too high last year? I think I did. Um, the card is wild. The card is so damn good. <laughs> if, if you're playing, if you're buying stick to the plan and you uh, don't upgrade your Ever Vigilant 2 and Ever, Ever Vigilant 4, you're actively making a mistake. Um, it gives you so much, right? Like, <laughs> it gives you so much fucking actions in one. It's insane. Um... I think that, like Ever Vigilant, I'm only playing, and due to my play style, I'm only playing Ever Vigilant if I am playing Stick to the Plan. Due to my own play style. So that carries on here as well. Um, that carries on here as well. So that that's the thing. But I think that I would not be happy sticking with Ever Vigilant 1 if I had the ability to get to Ever Vigilant 4. Being able to use any actions that you cannot to help other people get set up is a very powerful effect for a card that you can always play on turn 1. Um, I'm going to give it a 4. I think I overrated it slightly last year but not enough for me to drop it to a 3.5, because I do think it's better than a 3.5. I think the card is very good. Um, like, So you spend an action, but then you get three play actions. You get four play actions, but you really get three actions. Then you also get three resources. So this thing, what, has six? Six actions in one card? It's insane. Uh, that's insane. Anyways, uh, I gave it a 4. Chat, you gave it a 3.5. So I'm going to say overall, win across the board for us. Alright, on to some Seeker cards. As you can see, these ones are actually now in order by class. Because these are all... We did the second half when everything else was out. Alright, Dissection Tools. Oh, Dissection Tools. Uh, two cost takes up the hand slot. Item tool science. After an enemy location is defeated, place one resource from, on this card as evidence. While dissection tool has one or more evidence, you get plus one foot. Two or more evidence, you get plus one fist. Three or more evidence, you get plus one sanity. Um, I think the big problem with dissection tools right now is that I think it's just the hand slot, right? The hand slot's a very competitive slot, and if you want to be fighting, um, it's not... I do that, and Joe is good, because Joe has his guns, which he can use to... Which he can use to make it a little bit easier to hold multiple things. Isn't Joe like one of the most star for hand slots characters ever? Not if they're tools. <laughs> Not if they're tools. <laughs> his, because a signature gun can allow him to hold more tools. I'm curious to see what happens with um, Hemlock Veil vale in this card. I think it's going to go up in its juice there. But I think... I think it's kind of telling that one of the only level zero seeker cards I have yet to play this year is Dissection Tools, even though I've put it in decks, because the hand slot's just so competitive. If this was an accessory slot, sign me up. I'd be happy to play this in a lot of decks. But I think just like right now, I mean, I like it with that uh, the crazy scientist, the crazy surgeon. Um... I could also see it, yeah, tried in Finn Edwards. I think that can be a good um, a good way of going it. <sighs> I 
I think I have to give it a 2.5, but we'll see how that goes over time. So I, I'm going to drop it to a 2.5 because I just was never happy playing the card. And chat, you guys dropped it down to a 2.8. So I'm going to call that one an L on your side from a 3.7 to a 2.8. On to Grim Memoir. This card's fucking sick. Grim Memoir continually finds ways to impress me. It's kind of just like crazy the plot twist that it can have here. All right, so three costs, four secrets. Takes up the hand slot. Spend a secret investigate. You get plus two book for this investigation. If you succeed by two or more, you may draw a card. Uh, card text is great. The amount of investigators that this is super playable in is also really cool. Uh, I like it with Daisy. Um, I really dig using her Tome ability on Grim Memoir. Uh, an additional investigate each turn is really nice. Um, I like it in Harvey Walters. I like it in Rex Murphy. I like it in, like, pfft, I'd fucking play it in Norman Withers and probably have a great time. I'd play it in Min and have a good time. It's just like card draw. Um, but I think the card is very fair. <laughs> I think it's costed very well, all things considered. I think it's like a very reasonable card across the board, and I'm going to be sticking with my 3.5. I think the card is very good. But I never feel like I'm cheating when I play it, you know? Like, I never feel, like, dirty when I'm playing Grim Memoir. Grim Memoir is just like a play a payoff to all the other things you were doing. Because I think the card in and of itself is very fairly costed. I think it's great design. So I'm going to stay at a 3.5. Chad, you went up to a 4.2 from a 4. So obviously Grim Memoir is a real card. And I think we all can be very happy with that. Bizarre Diagnosis. Was Sleight of Hand feel dirty with this? I would enjoy playing Grim Memoir with uh, Sleight of Hand. That could be very fun. All right, Bizarre Diagnosis. Uh, zero cost event, commits for two books. Place one of your clues on your location, then heal three damage from an investigator or ally acid at your location. Uh, this is fantastic healing in Harvey Walters. Uh, I think otherwise, I don't see myself playing it in a lot of space. I mean, also, sorry, Vincent Lee as well, because he can just solve his problem with his ally. But, like, if you are not playing this card in Harvey Walters... You are making, I, I think like the whole, like the whole idea of Harvey Walters playing uh, versatile to get deny existence. You don't need to worry about that anymore. Just play Bizarre Diagnosis. Most of the time in its worst, Bizarre, uh, uh, your Thrice Damn Curiosity is going to deal three damage to you. Bizarre Diagnosis just stops that, right? It's basically just like how you get rid of that. And you also then don't need to, you know, um make the mistake of making your deck bigger even though you have good card draw it does mean it actually makes it harder to find the cards you otherwise would want to five fine chat you guys dropped exactly five votes on this and you actually all voted for a three so congratulations you guys got just an actual threes across the board and you know what am i going to agree with you Yeah, I think I am. I think the card is really good. I think the card's good. I think it's a good card. Um, uh, it also has a lot of synergy within the Clue Drop class. Like, I see, like, the Clue Drop Daryl. I can definitely get behind that as well. Daryl only has, what, six um, damage, too. So being able to, like, heal a burst of that is really good. Um, there's not really an ally apart from your wounded bystander that this really works on yet. Um... But I like the card. I think it's... It also just commits for two books if you don't need to heal. Uh, I think I did underrate it. Um, I love it in Harvey. I love it in Harvey. This works on agency backup. That is true. That... I don't think that's worth it, but I think that is true. <laughs> All right. Works on Guard Dog 2. Hey, let's go! We'll Pump Guard Dog 2 up! That's also a lie. It also just works on regular Guard Dog. <laughs> Alright. Analysis. Uh, 
All right, analysis. Uh, it's a practice skill. After revealing a chaos token for the skill test, you may place one of your clues on your location to cancel that chaos token, return the chaos bag, and reveal a new one. Sorry, analysis. There we go. Um, so, uh, this card's good. I think it's a good card. Uh, I love it is uh, combo protection. I love it in min to protect your... It's not combo protection in like the traditional sense, but to protect your um, king in yellow. And I... Those are kind of the times I like it in. I would use this card in every Kate deck just because of theme and art. I think that's also very fair. Um, yeah, I think that, like, you could... You could, uh, you could um, argue that you can put this into just any deck that you're planning on doing big things with. Like, if you're planning on, like, using, like, Vicious Blows and Joe Diamond. And, um... I agree with that. That would be kind of sick. But it's not really like what I view the card for personally. Um, because I just think that it's... To me, like, this card screams, hey, protect your combo. Not like, hey, run this one card to make your vicious blows or something else better. Or make one test better. Um, it does... It is the only auto fail, uh, uh, anti-autofail card at level 0. And I think that... That's good, but I don't think it's great. Because I think just generally spreading your tests to like, how am I trying to say this? It just doesn't matter most of the time, right? That's just how I look at it. Is this good for roll and flex? Yeah, it's probably good for rolling flex. You can put the clue down, kill the enemy if you need to. Like, shoot an enemy, cancel the auto fail, kill the enemy, grab the clue that you put down. I could see that being a nice home for it. Uh, I'm going to give it a three. I think it's still a very good card. I'm going to give it a three. Chat, you guys also gave it a three. So, uh, thumbs up across the board. Went from a 3.2 to a three. So, I'm calling that a W. Lab coat. It was right in front of our faces the whole time. Kate Winthrop was in the room with us. So lab coat. Two cost, one experience. Takes up the body slot. Soaks for one and one. Item clothing science. It's a reaction when you would fail a skill test on a secret card by one or less. Exhaust lab coat. You succeed by zero instead. So I gave this a three last year. And I haven't played it. So I think that's a good sign that it probably isn't a 3. Right? It's probably a 2.5 if I haven't played it yet. But I do think that this card's going to go up in value with Hemlock Veil. Vale. I think that's just the truth. I think that's just the truth that this card's going to go up in value for Hemlock Veil. Vale. So the question is, do I do what my gut says and um, go with a 2.5? Or do I try to say, I told you so, and do a, two, and do a 3 again? <laughs> that's the question of the day. I think I'm going to go with a 2.5. I think it is going to get better with Hemlock Veil. Vale. But the question is, is it going to get better in Hemlock Veil vale specifically because of Kate Winthrop? Or is it going to get better in Hemlock Veil vale because other investigators would want to run it? And that's like, to me, the difference between a 2.5 and a 3, right? Like, if a card is very good in one investigator, but not great in other investigators, to me, that's kind of like a more middling card as a whole. Um, because, like, I think, like, a card should really shine in multiple decks for it to be really enticing, you know? Um, so I guess there remains to be seen if Kate Winthrop is going to play it, which I think is a yes, but then alternatively if other people are going to want to play it with the Hemlock Veil cards. And I think we're going to learn a lot there. So I'm going to drop it to a 2.5 and chat, you dropped it to a 2.6. Next up we got Guidance Level 1. 
Guidance Level 1. This is a zero cost, one experience card. That's an insight. To choose an investigator location who is yet to take their turn this round. During their turn, the chosen investigator gets plus one to each of their skills and may take an additional action. Playing Guidance does not provoke attacks of opportunity. I don't have much to say about this card. Uh, Carson likes it. Um, Parallel Roland, if he can play this version, likes it. I don't know Parallel Roland's uh, deck building, to be honest with you. Um, but I'm going to give it a two. I'm giving this one a two just because it's also, like, not great. It's not great. I'm going to play it in Carson, and as I've learned, Parallel Roland can actually take it, so I play it there too. Because it being fast is kind of fun, but I think the card itself is also just kind of just... Not that great. So we're going to give that one a two. And let's see how chat does. Chat, congratulations. You guys also got a 2.7. We have stayed the exact same on this card. So we're going to call that a win. Next up, we got Dr. William T. Mailson. He is the level 2 version. And poor guy, he still just can't get out from the boot of Dr. Milan Christopher. Freaking Dr. Milan Christopher, man. One cost, two experience. Soaks for two and two. When any investigator draws an encounter card from the encounter deck, do exhaust Dr. William T. Mailson, place one of your clues on your location. That investigator draws another card from the top of the encounter deck, chooses one of those two cards to resolve and cancel, and cancels and discards the other. Damn, next 27 months at the golden table. Thank you for your support and using your Twitch Prime on us. Much appreciated. Um, uh, this guy can be taken as off color though. Dr. Milan matters less there. Yeah, but then each color has their own sick ass allies. They're probably still gonna run over Dr. William T. Mailson. I think Dr. William T. Mailson is a very good card still. He's very good Mythos protection. Um, I do think I gave him a too high of a rating. I think I was just a little bit, like, stoked on the, um... Stoked on the... Whoa. I do think I was stoked on the clue dropping stuff. So I'm going to drop him down to a 3.5. And chat, you guys are actually psyched on Dr. William T. Mailson. You gave this guy a 4.5. You actually went up this year. So super impressive on your Dr. William T. Mailson love. I mean, I get it. The card is good. The problem for me is that I think that he doesn't qualify as a 4 for me. Um, but I think the card text is really good. It's just a matter of... Unfortunately, a lot of the times in Clue Drop, I still just want the economy that Dr. Milan provides. Which is stupid. It's stupid. Economy is just, I mean, economy is so important. But the effect is very good. I've played him and I'm going to be playing him again soon. He also just soaks for a lot. He asks for so little and he gives you so much. Press Pass. Press Pass is a very interesting card to evaluate. So Press Pass, four cost, two experience, takes up the accessory slot. After you spend one or more clues or place one or more clues in your location, exhaust Press Pass. You may take an additional action during this turn. So I think that this card, to me, is super exciting when you're spending the clues. Uh, so like in Innsmouth, for example, which I may have been doing on Monday this week, uh, spending a lot of clues and getting more actions out of is really nice. I think the problem is, is while the clue drop package is very good, and like research notes, sorry, while the clue drop package can have the potential to get a lot of clues at once due to the power of research notes, you actually spend a lot of time spinning your gears until you get to those big turns, right? And I think that's kind of just the problem with this card is that, sure, it certainly helps you 
spin your uh, spin your wheels less because you're getting more actions just generally across the board. <clears throat> um, because you're just like being able to like use your actions more because you're, you're not losing actions dropping clues. Um, you're still putting clues down, which is good because that's your whole archetype. And then you're picking a bunch up with research notes. But I think this is something that um, one of our Discord users says a lot. I think with uh, the whole clue dropping uh, archetype, people see the research notes and that makes them go, wow. But then they forget about all the, like research notes, unless you have two in play, a lot of the time is just like making up for tempo that you lost earlier, right? Like making up with a little bit of extra tempo on top. And I think press pass, while certainly helps mitigate that tempo, um, it allows you to gain more. It's a lot of pieces you need in order to get the machine running. It also costs four. That's a lot of fucking money. I'm going to give this card a 3.5. I think I was higher on it last year, but not by much. Um, chat, you guys went from a 4.6 to a 4.5. Um, it's one of those things where, like, you know, we both are a little bit down than we were last year. Using Mail Center Plus through a quick study, it's not just for tempo loss. It's more of a payout with this card. That is true, but you still need to then pick up the clue again, right? Because, like, I think the reality is, unfortunately, with this, like, with the quick study example, it's probably just better if you just run mythos protection <laughs> like because of like you're trying to defend yourself in the mythos phase just run like a skill card or um i don't know i just i just feel like i think again people see like the explosive final part of research notes for the clue archetype and rather like watching the person kind of just like for the majority of the scenario that's just how I feel anyway. I could be wrong. What do I know? I'm just an idiot on the internet. Fingerprint kit four. You know? Shriveling has an upgrade. Why shouldn't Seeker Shriveling have an upgrade? Five cost, four experience, commits for two books, take up a hand slot, uses three supplies, exhaust fingerprint kit, and spend a supply. Investigate your plus two book for this investigation. If you succeed, you discover two additional clues at your location. I'm going to be honest, I don't think this is worth five cost, four, resor uh, four, uh, four experience, and five resources. Um, I'm going to give it a three. I think the card is still, like, the text on the card is still nice. Um, but it's a lot that you need to put in to get out, like, economy and experience-wise. I don't think the card's bad, but I do think I'm going to drop it down to a three for my rating. Just because it's... Just because of all the costs that you need to put in. And, like, I think that while you'll eventually upgrade into this if you're playing at three or four players, Fingerprint Zero is going to do the, a good chunk of work even for you if you run it. And then there's also, like, the whole things... Um, I mean, it is... Like, yeah, like I see the people saying it is good in three or four players, and I agree. But I think also... I think the reality is, is there's just better things you can be doing with your money and experience to get even more out of it. You know, I just, I just think that there's like, I think that you can demand more. You can demand more from your stuff than what this card is asking. You can do more with four experience. Uh, anyway, Chad, you ultimately do agree, because I dropped it down to a 3, and you guys dropped it to a 3.2, so I can see it. You have a 0.6 so drop, chat, so I'm going to just say it. That's embarrassing. A 0.5, fine. 0. 0.6, oh, embarrassing. Grey's Anatomy, oh no. I've seen this card played once, and it was sweet. When crack the case, burning you or running those anyway, five costs is irrelevant. I disagree with that. I don't think five cost is irrelevant. Five cost is a lot of money. <laughs> Actually, I, I, I kind of think less of now of that, of everything you say, if you think the five cost is irrelevant. Five cost is a lot of money. 
Five cost is a lot. Anyway, raise anatomy. Three cost, five experience. Item tome. Takes up the hand slot as an action. Choose a card of your location and test book one. For each point you succeed by, choose one. The next time that card would be healed this round, heal plus one damage and horror to a maximum of plus three. Next time that card would deal uh, would be dealt damage this round, deal plus one damage to a maximum of plus three. So I saw this uh, in Vincent, when Travis's Vincent deck, and it's cool, but I don't think it's great. Oh, I'm going to give it a three. I think I'm going to drop it down. I kind of even want to give it like a 2.5, to be honest. I kind of want to give it a 2.5. But I think like the text on the card itself is like... Is like functional enough? I think I am going to drop it to a 3, though. I don't know, man. I think it just fall it, it it falls into the kind of things that I was just we were just talking about. Five experience is a lot for a card that is kind of just here to support. And in like three or four players, you have the time to support, right? And you also like need other cards for this this card. This card should not have cost five experience. It's basically what I'm coming down to, right? I don't think that this card... I don't think this card should have costed 5 experience. I don't know what I would have costed it. But I, I don't know. This damage mode doesn't really support. It's more like an attack with extra steps. Yeah. So, here's a question then. If I may ask you. How, as the goon, are you playing this card and using the ability without getting hurt? Oh, so the Seeker's playing. Okay. So then what is the Seeker... Why is the Seeker then taking time away from investigating to use the ability on this card? Supporting you as the goon when they should be progressing the game. Oh, okay. So what we really need is we need the support holding this who's kind of just flexing and doing what's needed at the time, right? So it is a support card. It's supporting the fighter doing more damage so the fighter can spend more time doing other things. And it's... Because of that, it's kind of just like... I don't know. I just feel like it's, it's a lot of juice... And I don't think it's worth the squeeze, you know? I, I mean, I dropped it to a 3, so I went down to 0.5. Chat, you also dropped it to a 3? Uh, I just think it's a bit too much. I, I'm very tempted to give it a 2.5, to be honest. It's just 5 experiences a lot. Like when there's a last possible scenario and you need no investigates at that point, unless it's a secret chip in with his 5 cents. Okay, so you're going to spend five experience for the two scenarios in your campaign where this matters? Like, I just don't think it's worth it, right? I think that's what it comes down to. I feel like this card is missing the one thing to be worth it. Yeah, I agree. It's just missing the, the one little something. I think it's just a little bit too expensive experience-wise. It's powerful when you get it going, you know? 0 0.3 is fine. 0 0.3 kind of embarrassing. I agree. I agree. <laughs> I should I should be ashamed of myself. I don't know, man. I want to like the card because I think Grey's Anatomy, Anatomy is a very cool card. Um, yeah, and also like, yeah, Dice Gods is 100% right. Uh, if, if you're using this as a seeker to support your fighter in the final boss, just like, I've got a plan. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. It's kind of just even out class. I think it's just like, it's just a little bit too much. I think in playtesting, they were worried about the card, which is fair because I do think that it can do good things. But I think it was, they were a bit too worried. Yeah, I don't know. Not big on Grey's Anatomy. Uh, you know what? I'm going to give it a 2.5. I'm going to, I'm going to take the L. I'm going to drop down a full one. So I, 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 I dropped down a 0.5 before. I'm going to go down to a 2.5. I think the card is just too experience intensive to be really, like, super shiny. And you need, like, either be the support 
or be playing a Weirds Mobile deck to really get the full use out of it. I'm doing it. So, Chad, you went down a point three, and I went down an embarrassing point one. <laughs> All right. We are on to some rogue cards here. We got Honed Instinct. Uh, one, exp one cost, customizable, fast, play only after one of the following conditions is met. The agenda or act advances. You can see the skill test by three or more. Immediately takes an action as if it was your turn. Uh, reflex response adds the following conditions. You take damage or horror, situational awareness, location, and just play is revealed. Killer instinct, an enemy engages you. Gut reaction, a treachery enters your threat area. Muscle memory, you play an asset. Sharpen talent, during the action granted by Hone Instinct, you get plus two to each of your skills. Impulse control, you may include up to three copies of Hone Instinct in your deck, and it gets minus one cost. Force of habit, when you play Instinct, you may take two actions instead of one, then remove it from the game. So if you take one action, it doesn't remove it from the game. That's kind of cool. Um, I like it in Kaimani. I like it in Tony. Mostly because I like the killer instinct mode. Like. Killer. The enemy engaging you to take an action. I think is a really fun ability. Works really well against hunter enemies. That's kind of like where I view this card's home being. Right? You take killer instinct. And you basically like. You can kill enemies before they can attack you. You can evade enemies before they attack. You can get a free evade if you draw a free evade or attack during the enemy uh, uh, mythos phase. My dream of these is to play three of these on the same trigger condition to do six actions. That does sound like a very fucking good dream. And I hope you get to experience it because that sounds great. I don't know. I think I'm going to give it a three. I think I overhyped it a little bit. I do think I do like the card though, and it has homes. Um, I think you need to get like some juicier experience for it to like actually be worth it. But even then, if someone says that this card isn't worth it to them, I'd agree overall. Whoa, Chad, let's go! So I went from a three point five to a three. Chad, you went from a three point three to a four. I love to see it. You love to see like the hype go through the roof. Um. I mean, yeah, I like the card. I like the card. Sharpened Talents also. I think I need to play with it more. See if I can explore to more places. Because the reality is, is that everyone wants more actions. Right? Like, everybody wants more actions. It's just the question of how much do you need to put in for it to make it worth it for the card. For me, as Tony or Kaimani, it's not much. But for other investigators, it's more. I just gotta figure out what that more is. You know, I gotta see, like... Where I actually want to do all that stuff with it. I'm, I, I love it, Chad. You guys giving it a four, though? That's super sick. All right. Kicking the hornet's nest. <sighs> Kicking the hornet's nest. Okay, so we both gave it a 4.5. Zero cost event, gambit tactic. Search top nine cards in counter deck for a non elite enemy and spawn and engage with you instead of its normal spawn location. Then discover one clue your location and gain X resources where X is the enemy's health value. Shuffle the encounter deck. Ah, so this was, and I still think was my most, was the card I was the most wrong about in the Scarlet Keys. I think the deck... I think the deck that wants Kicking the Hornet's Nest is very good. It's very good in Kicking the Hornet's Nest. Um, <laughs> I, used, I used to think like, hey, I would love this card in Trish, but the reality... <laughs> The reality is, um, with Trish, a lot of the time, this ends up being a situation 
where I'm like, oh, now I have to evade this enemy. <laughs> and like, there's just better options in Trish for both getting clues and getting resources. Um, I love it in Mark. I love it in Tony. I could see it being good in Kaimani. Does this resolve? Yeah, so Trish will get her ability from... She will get to do her ability from this. But then you're basically spending... Uh, <laughs> you're spending an action to gain some money and just do your resource badly. And I think that's like... It, like I just think there's like... it's it's It was much less impressive than I thought it was going to be. I'm dropping this one actually down to a three, by the way. It's it's my it's my biggest drop. I I've seen a lot of people play this card and then just like be like, how do I deal with this enemy that we just drew? Right? And like I think the reality is is that for a lot of people there's better ways to just get clues and also get resources. And I think I was blinded by this card. I thought this card was going to be a banger staple, right? It also bypasses Spawn Aloof. It does! That is true! In those cases where you can hit that. And then you're getting, like, one resource. And it's like... I don't think... I think in that case, like, being able to, like, get an Acolyte, kill the Acolyte, and then do it is not really worth the card as a whole. Um, yeah, I'm dropping this one down to a three. I don't think the card's that great. I've seen a lot of people play it badly. I've seen people keep it in their hand and they're, they're just like, you're like, okay, I, I, there's no time for play this because as soon as you draw an enemy, this card is just like, okay, this card basically just doesn't exist in my hand and I wish it was anything else. And if someone else draws an enemy, the same logic applies. I don't know. I definitely think I overrated it. I dropped it down to a 3 from a 4.5. And I mean, like, I think I massively overrated it. And chat, you guys went from a, a 4.5 to a 3.8 on kicking the hornet's nest. Stylish coat. I love me my stylish coat. Card's fun. Two uh, costs, one experience, as it takes up the body slot, soaks for one and one. When you gain one or more resources during your turn via another player card effect, exhaust Stylish Coat and gain an additional resource. I gave it a three last year, and honestly, I'm going to run it back with a three this year. Uh, I think the card is kind of sick. It's... <laughs> It, it, like it's it's it has its home in the big money decks or if anywhere where you're gaining a lot of money you're, you're gonna be surprised it's just the small times that this card is gonna gain you more resources as it goes and uh that's really nice uh you love it in uh parallel skids in parallel skids it's kind of just downright dirty um but if you're not in a deck that's looking to make a lot of money or have a lot of money stylish coat ain't for you um, and I think that's just really nice. I think it's a good card for that kind of thing. And I'm going to be giving it a 3 out of 5. Chad, let's see what you guys got. Also upgraded Zoe deck. So yeah, I did that with Bob in our assets only run with Bryn and I. And uh, it was juicy. Lone Wolf. Yeah, there's just a lot of small cards that just you get like so much more incremental value out of them with Stylish Coat. And Stylish Coat doesn't ask for much. Anyways, I gave it a 3 this year. Chat, you guys gave it a 3.1, so I'm calling that a W. Another chat win. Put it in the logbooks. That's the win, the stamp of winning. Hey, Dirty Fighting. Great card. We love Dirty Fighting here. 3 cost, 2 experience, level 1 per investigator. While attacking, parlaying, or attempting to evade an exhausted enemy, you get plus 2 skill value. As a reaction, after you've made an enemy exhaust dirty fighting, take a fight action against that enemy. Ignore the aloof keyword for this attack. Uh, to me, this is like one of the most exciting cards from the set. 
It's really exciting. It's very fun. It's opened up a lot of people to be able to explore an archetype that was previously unexplorable to them. It opened up a lot of people to make them more efficient in what they were doing. Um, great for a lot of investors. Kaimani, Rita, Finn, um, Tony Morgan, if you're feeling a little bit spicy somehow. <laughs> no, but I mean, like, it, it just has a lot of places where this card is super juicy. It's absolutely wonderful design. I'm going to bump it up to a 4.5. To me, this, like, sits with, like, the Gurish, where it's like, hey, this is one of the cards that you, you love to see and you love to keep seeing. Someone gave this card a 2? One of y'all out there in chat gave this card a 2? That's crazy to me. I could see a 3, but a 2? Anyways, chat, you guys gave it a 4.3. From a 4.1 to a 4.3. Nice job. Chuck Fergus, level 2. Let's start the poll. I know with democracy, you're not supposed to read the votes out loud, but I just did. Four cost, two experience, takes up the ally slot. As a reaction, when you play attack or a trick event, exhaust Chug Fergus, choose one. That event gains fast. That event costs two fewer resources to play. You get plus two skill value while performing a skill test during the resolution of that event. This is a great card. You guys gave it a 4.8 last year. That's very impressive. That's very impressive. Um... This guy looks like my wife's brother. Uh, I think the card's really good, though. I think I'm, I'm going to stick with the four as well. I think Chuck Fergus is a very good ally. And while the higher version... While the higher version is better, as it should be, this does provide multiple important things. Number one, the card text is still very relevant and good. Number two, um, it provides a stepping stone to get you up towards um, up towards the big Chuck. And three, it is now good for off-class investigators as well. Chad, I'm just telling you right now, your score is going to drop like a fucking brick on this one. All right, so I gave it a 4.0 and chat. You gave it a 3.4. So you dropped a full point and a half almost. I mean, I think the ally is still good. He does every he does a lot for level four. For, sorry, for a level two card that costs four. We just need a level zero chuck. What would a level zero chuck do? It'd be hard to figure out a level zero chuck. You choose zero. It just shows you what you can get in the future. That's really funny. <laughs> He's just there. I can get that. Exactly. action. When you play a trick, attack or trigger, exhaust chug. That's it. I can see the one for one for your resource or plus one skill value and then remove the fast. Yep. I, 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 I support that. I think that's a great idea. Speaking of great ideas, here's Trigger Man. All right, Trigger Man. Four cost, three experience, uh, ally slot. As a reaction after Ender's play, attach an illicit asset from your hand to Trigger Man. It's considered to be in play and under control and still taking up the slot. He's You're holding the gun. He's just putting his finger through the, 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 the trigger. As Lightning Bolt Exhaust Trigger Man has spent a resource, resolve an action ability on attached asset without paying its action cost, resolve that ability with a base skill value of four. Um, yeah, I see Gun Charlie as a place that he could actually like do some stuff in. Other than that, though, I've played Trigger Man in a, a one deck that I put um, Burglary on him, which was very fun, um, but the card is not great. He costs way too much. Like, he costs way too much across the board. I think he costs too much experience. I, can't, I think he costs too many resources. <laughs> and, yeah. I don't know, man. Trigger Man's just, to me, a dud card. I'm going to give this guy a 2. I'm going to drop him all the way down to a 2. I do not think the card is great. 
And chat, you guys are going to give them a 2.4. I think the car doesn't even, like, have a home outside of Charlie. I can see the Charlie one. That one does seem kind of fun. But... I don't know. He's basically... Yeah, you do get to play the illicit asset for free. Which, as we all know, money is really hard to get in the rogue class. Same with actions. Rogues, they don't have money or actions. So, um, they can't afford that shit. They don't have the time for that shit. Um, but, I think the problem is... Is that you're basically paying, apart from his ability where they enter, the, the um, where they enter, when they enter with the gun, um, you're basically paying a resource to get a, a beat cop with the majority of investigators who can play him. With Tony, you're actually becoming, it's a, it's a negative beat cop. It's a worse beat cop. I just, like, like, I understand where people are like, he can bring in the Thompson. He can bring in the Thompson. But I don't think that's worth it. I think your ally is just better, you know? You, you're, you're at, you could just get a better ally, right? Like, for, for the three experience. Like, that's the thing, right? Like, if, if, like, Delilah... If Delilah costed four experience... I'd be like, yeah, I can see why you want to make your fist better to do things with. But, like, the problem is the rogue allies are so good, right? Um, I think the problem with Trigger Man 2 for me personally is that... If it was, like, base skill... I think if it was base skill value of 5, now we're talking. I think base skill value of 5, we could go to the moon with this card. But... I've, play, I've tried this guy in, like two decks and we recorded on Wednesday and both Britt and Travis played Trigger Man for the first time and they did not have a good time. They would they just did not have a good time with Trigger Man. Not one bit. It would be fun if Jim, if, Jim, if the new parallel gym could take him. Yeah, that would be pretty funny. Moment of silence. Moment of silence. <laughs> Alright, moment of silence. Clean sneak. Can you still use the gun regularly too? Yeah, you can still use the gun regularly. Uh, zero cost, four experience, gambit trick, fast play only during your turn. For each exhausted, non-swarm enemy or location, choose a different option. Gain two resources, deal two damage to that enemy, discover a clear location, draw a card. So, um, we have to say what we have to say, which is, I don't understand why this card isn't playable in, it's not playable in Finn Arita. It seems like a massive whiff. Because I, I understand that every rogue can evade, right? I feel like every rogue can evade. For the most part. But it's just a question of, like, why like they wouldn't want to run them. They wouldn't want to run it. Rita's in 0-5 tricks? No. She is not. She's 0-3. Yeah, and Finn is a 0-3 rogue. <sighs> I don't know. Like, I think the text on the card is good. But I, I don't think the text, the work, is worth the experience. Because you're basically trading your evade action. Like, what this card best basically is doing is trading your evade actions for other actions. Right? So, like, you're evading... 
and then you are reaping the rewards of your evade. That's kind of like what's happening there. The only thing I gotta ask is like during playtesting, what situation do they get in when they have like a million enemies in play? <laughs> I don't know, man. What I think they should have done is they should have had this be level two. Have it, uh, I would even like take a not fast, right? Or just like keep it be fast, but change it to like gain one resource, deal uh, two damage to the enemy. Or gain two resources, deal two damage. Like just like make it a little bit worse. And then um, I would make a level five version that lets you do it with swarm enemies. I think that could be really fun. I don't know, man. I'm going to give the card probably a 2. Like, I see where the card lives in theory. Like, what it's supposed to be, you know? Millennium's awesome enemy is easy with a power word teammate, maybe? That could be the playtesting. Yeah, but if... I, I hope that isn't the case. I'm going to assume that's not the case. Because if they had that situation and they thought we gotta bump up clean sneak, not hey we gotta bump down power word, um, I'm gonna scream. <laughs> Cause in that situation the problem ain't clean sneak. That's definitely not. Um. Yeah, I I see where this card lives and like what it's trying to do. Um, like it's replacing your evade actions with other actions. Um, but I do agree with what, what Jeffo is saying is that what I, I was thinking the same thing in my head that one of the actions should have been move so you can like get out of there after evading. You know, you can flee the crime scene. Uh, flee the crime scene. Um, yeah, so I gave it a two, dropped down a whole one. Chat, you guys dropped it down to a 1.4. You do not like clean sneak. And uh, honestly, I don't blame you. All right, we are here in Amina Zidane. So uh, as I said previously, I rated the investigators a little bit differently than how I rated the player cards because I think that player cards are easier in general to kind of know like where they fit than investigators, how they perform actually takes into play. Um, Amina was... She's sitting in a very tough place right now. Where to me personally, I can never rate an investigator like lower than a three. Because I think like all investigators have like a home that they exist in. Um, Amina definitely doesn't make a good case for herself. Mostly just due to the fact that... I think she kind of got boned a little bit. Hypus question is worse than Lola? Mm -mm, I don't think so. I don't think so. I think Amina has has decks that she can build. I think Amina has decks that she can build. You play Amina... Oh, did I only put a minute on that? This is a wild ranking over here. From chat. Just gonna go to a 2.7. We actually had, like, a vote in every number for Amina. So, chat, you guys are dropping her down to a 2.7. Now, I need to talk about Amina. So, her ability of reducing the cost of things, in theory, sounded really nice, you know? In the Thream Team run, Amina consistently performed worse than Lola. Yeah, that's because um, Amina had a harder role than Lola. Uh, Lola was just there to get clues. Drux, the streamer, thank you so much for the follow on the goddamn table. Uh, Lola was only there to get clues. Uh, Amina was built to be the flex. Uh, and I would argue that it's easier for investigators like this to build uh, a role that's focused than it is to build a flex. I think that a flex Lola would have done worse than a purely built Amina. Uh... I mean, I'm going to give her a three. 
as I said, I have a hard time giving an investigator lower than a three. Um, but I think the problem with her is they just, they tried something. You know, they tried, they tried to give her threes across the board. And I don't think it was great. However, I do think she's going to love playing with the masks in Hemlock Vale. Uh, I see, yeah, Travis played her, and he did good things with Amina, too. I think you can do good things with Amina. I think the problem with Amina is that... Number one... That's your stat line. But number two was that I think a lot of players are kind of... They're trying to play Amina too, too traditionally. And I don't think she's meant to be played traditionally. I think that her stat line would be... She would be better at playing untraditionally if her stat line was a little bit better. Like, if she had, like... I think she should have had four brain. Um, just because... I mean, like, I don't know. Because then it doesn't matter. I actually don't know. I don't know, man. Um, I For me, the Amina I want to play plays with Dream Diary. But I think the Amina is going to start, like, popping off a little bit when she can play with all the masks from Hemlock Vale, and she's basically just, like, swapping the masks as she sees fit, you know? She has a lot of stuff. The mistake is going for willpower, when she should go for intellect. I could see that, too. I mean, she has the tools to build into um, book really well, you know? That's what I'm saying, right? Like, uh, to go back to the user's point about uh, how Lola did better in the three team, I think that Amina could build a very competent clue getter. Um, just give her, like, fucking book boosts, read the signs, uh, drawn to the... Yeah, actually, I can see it. Divination? Yeah, no, yeah, I, I believe it. Um, she's fun. I don't know. Uh, I'll, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be real with you, Stu Dunsparce. I don't know. <laughs> Her, I think that she's actually not fun. <laughs> uh, just because like she doesn't. I think she's gonna get more fun as it goes. I think she's fun to you because she's bad. <laughs> <laughs> like she's not great you know so it's like that's what you love you love working with the scrappy underdogs but i think that she's gonna get fun with the masks i think that the charm isn't a big enough boost yet it's kind of like rita when she just had tricks at the beginning um she was like missing that little thing that made her like really poggy and i think that she started getting them and i think we're gonna see a similar trend with amina you know Charms are just... I think that the big problem is, like, right now, she's mostly just a mono mystic with, like, some good charms, but no great charms. And I think we're going to start seeing some charms really start going nuts with uh, in the future. The 3 3, three guys kind of want to use all your stats or you are or you are wasting them. I don't think that's true. I think what the 3 3, three guys have is that it means that you, I think actually that is the trap that a lot of people fall into with the three investigators. The threes across the board mean that with a little bit of help um, through a committed skill or someone else committing a skill, they are a breaking case of emergency. Yeah, not a suit done sparse. That's a great way to put it. It's just, uh, yeah, three, the threes are there as like breaking case of emergency 100%. Yeah, I'm optimistic for Amina's future. Um, but it is a trend that the all three investigators are worse because they don't have, like, they, they have to, like, even if you build around one stat, they have to work harder, right? Um, but I love the character. But she doesn't inspire anything in me when it comes to building her, so that's why I'm not really, like, why well, I haven't played her yet. Because the only deck that I want to play her in right now is just, like, a Dream Diary deck, and... It's still not enough for making me go, yes, that's what we want. We're on to Living Ink. I like Living Ink. I think it's a very fun card. I gave it a 3 last year. Chad gave it a 4.2. 
So Living Ink. Zero cost, customizable. When you purchase Living Ink, choose a skill and circle it on its upgrade sheet. Uses three charges, remove one charge from Living Ink at the start of each of your turns. If Living Ink has no charges, discard it. You get plus one to the chosen skills. Circle of skill, the one that you've chosen on upgrade. Shifting Ink, you may play Living Ink under the control of another investigator your location. Subtle Depiction, at the start of your turn, you may, you may choose not to remove a charge from Living Ink and ignore its ability for the remainder of the round. Imbued Ink, Living Ink enters play with two additional charges and takes up an arcane slot instead of a body slot. Eldritch Ink, circle another skill. Eldritch Ink, circle another skill. Macabre Depiction, Living Ink gains as a reaction after you reveal a Chaos Token with a symbol. Exhaust Living Ink, place a charge on it. Vibrancy, Living Ink grants, grants an additional plus one to the circled skills and minus one to each other skills. So can I, I'm going to ask a question that's kind of like tangentially related to Living Ink. But um, a lot of people asked us, asked us that... Can you actually use teamwork on a runic axe? Because they th they said, in theory, they thought that maybe when the card shifted to Daniela, for example, um, when it shifted to Daniela, she did not have the upgrade sheet, right? Doesn't uh, shifting ink kind of imply that the upgrade sheet is linked to the card? It's linked to the card, not the investigator. Does that answer the question that everybody's answering? Is this what I can tell people in the future if they ask me this? Because otherwise, you play shifting under the control of another investigator, and then it doesn't. <laughs> I think it's covered in the rules insert. Let's see. I have to get your guys' scores in, though. Give me a second. We're going to take a slight detour here. Nice, chat. You guys put it up to a Upgrading card and investigate early purchase one more copies. Upgrades of customer cards be present at all times. Even on the card or upgrade upgraded cards for customer cards can be present on the card at all times. Even while the card is in an out of play area, such an investigator's hand or discard pile. Okay, so that also solves it, right? Yeah. Okay. So that's good. So yeah, to answer all those people for Runic Axe, it does carry over. It does carry over. There we go. Okay, uh, I like Living Ink. You guys gave it a 4.5. Um, yeah, I also like, I don't think that, I don't even think that this is one of the reasons, like, I do agree with you that I don't think Mystics need an, a level zero ally that gives you brain boost. I mean, David Renfield does at a cost, but Mystic has like a million ways to boost their brain. Um, and this is just another great tool for that kit. I like it. I love the whole... I love Subtle Depiction. Um, I love Eldritch Jinx. I love Macabre Depiction. I love Vibrancy. Uh, and Beauty Ink ain't bad, and Shifting Ink I'll probably never play, because why would I give you my card? You're not me. You suck. Um, I like it. I think I'm going to bump it up to a 3.5, I think. No, you know what? You know what, chat? I'm going to bump it up to a four. I think the card is actually super poggy. I think I really underrated it. I think the card's very good. I think the card makes me, like, super happy when I see it. I've never, like, when someone's played it, I've never been upset when someone's played it. It just does a lot for very little. I wonder if the infinite mythos phase boost was intended. I think it's fine if it was, because what you need, uh, so to get like the plus ones, you need to get put uh, one experience into it. So, and then you get like plus one brain during the mythos phase for the rest of the game. And I think that's fine for one experience. Um, 
As you go into Vibrancy, you now need four experience. Four experience and an action gives you like plus one to two of your stats. Say it helps you on four Mythos cards for the game, so you're basically playing four experience throughout the game. I think that's totally fair. I don't know if Intended was the right... I might not know if it's Intended, but I could see it being totally fine and Intended that way and then being happy with it, because I think it's incredibly fair for those cards. Great card, though. The Onyx Pentacle. All right, guys, no bullying, please. This is a bullying-free zone. Please do not bully Onyx Pentacle. With all that said... With all that said... Three cost asset as a hand uh, takes up a hand slot as an action to evade. Either use your brain or get plus one foot for this evasion attempt. When you initiate the ability, choose one. Exhaust on expenticle and place one doom on it to target uh, to target an enemy at your location or connecting location and get plus one skill value for this evasion attempt. Uh, if you see by two or more, remove one doom from Onyx Pentacle. Uh, I mean, honestly, I'm just gonna ride the lightning. I think that there's a home for these decks. I think the evade at an adjacent location is a very nice effect. I think that generally, I still don't want to be spending my time evading. For me, it feels like if I'm evading, unless I'm a, a Kaimani deck or a Rita deck, I'm actually just making the game worse for myself. So I'm going to give it a 2.5. I'm, I'm happy with my rating for it last year. Uh, I think it has homes. I think it has decks that it can be really it can shine in. But I think um, I think it's still an evasion card, so I'm not super into it. Ooh, chat, you. You're all over the place for this card. And you're going to give it a 2.8 when all things are said and done. So you got up a bit. I mean, I can respect it. If someone t told me that this card was a 3, I would be like, yeah, I can see it. I personally don't, but that's also just because I don't like evading. Unless I'm a, de a deck designed to kill with invading. Hey, Russ. You come to say hi to chat? Or you just wanted to, me to feed you? Because that's all you want lately. You, he sleeps, then he wakes up, and he's like... He thinks he's a bear hibernating or something. We got Explosive Ward. Alright, Russ, let's start a new poll for people at home to vote on what they think for Explosive Ward. Explosive Ward is an X-cost spell. Before you play Explosive Ward, you may discard any number of cards from your arcane slots. Deal X damage to a non elite enemy engaged with you. X cannot be greater than the number of arcane empty slots, uh, uh, number of empty arcane slots you have. This action does not provoke a tax opportunity. Wow, you hate this. I like it. I'm still giving it a three. I think the card, the Tesla's damage is very good. Um, I've used this card to great effect, and I've always been happy with it. I'm still giving it a three. Tesla's damage, baby, in the right deck goes the uh, goes a long way. I'll gladly pay two resources to uh, to kill some things. I think like the idea of trying to get this card like to the roof, like to the like, to the moon, like through the roof is what I should have said. I think is kind of a trap. I think you just run this card to deal some damage to things. Chat's pretty similar. They're gonna give it a 2.7. Seems fun in Luke. Seems very fun in Luke. Yeah, I like it. I mean, all it's hard for me to look at Tesla's damage and say this card is that card that's I don't want to play that Tesla's damage. Binder's Jar. This card's fun. I think people overrate the ability of removing an enemy from the encounter deck, but I can see why people like it. The card is certainly fun. Two cost, one experience, takes up the accessory slot, item relic. Uh, you get plus one arcane slot for each enemy beneath. Uh, Binder's Jar is a reaction after Nolly enemies defeated your location. Place that enemy face down beneath Binder's Jar. Uh, as a reaction, when an enemy attacks you, discard an enemy beneath Binder's Jar that shares a trait with the attacking enemy and cancel that attack. I like the card. I think it's fun. Uh, it being an accessory slot certainly doesn't help. Um, it's... Yeah, it does seem fun in the Forgotten Age 2. I'm happy with my rating last year. I'm going to give this thing a 3.0. I dig the card. 
I dig. I think it's sweet. I think it's just a fun card. It doesn't require, like... I mean, it just requires you to kill things. So if, unless you're not killing things, you're not going to run it. Um, I think the dodge, people should play more of. And I think while removing enemies is really fun, I don't think it's particularly impressive. Like, it's like, look at what I did. I removed that enemy forever. It's like, yeah, that's true. But it's also, hey, buddy. It's also more, like, cool than it is good, I think. Chat, you guys, hey, 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 hey. Be good, okay? If you're going to sit on me, you have to not attack me. Uh, so I'm standing at a 3, chat. You went from a 4.3 to a 3.3. Okay, here, why don't you get comfy again? Because I can tell you're already not comfy. Okay. You can also grief your friends and trap victory enemies. That's a good idea for a griefing run. <laughs> this I, I also can agree that this card does do a lot of different things. And it feels like it doesn't excel at any of them. And I can agree with that, but I think, like, that's okay. I think this was, like, a flavor first card uh, rather than a function first. And I think it was a good success because it's, it's very playable um, without being particularly unplayable or oppressive. Moonlight Ritual. The level 2 version. Nice and simple. Zero cost, two experience, uh, fast play on your turn. Remove all doom from a non-elite card at your location. Uh... I mean, it's one of the best at what it does, right? It's one of the best at what it does. I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna stick with the three. Yeah, I'm gonna give. I'm gonna give it a three. I'm gonna slap this on a Diana Esperance. That does sound sick. And this is when you say, "But I also wasn't running any Doom cards." <laughs> um, I do like that you can remove Doom from enemies. I think that like can be really clutch. Did could the level zero do that? I don't think so. Right. I could be wrong. It's been forever since I've looked at that card, to be honest. Hey. Okay, Russ. All right, come on. There you go. <laughs> yeah, it's a card you control. Okay, let's see what chat has given it. Um, chat gave it a 2.8. Thanks, buddy. Thanks for knocking my stuff on the ground. Very cash money of you. Try to get comfy again and just don't like start panicking when you start falling off because the real spices are moving doom from locations. <laughs> yeah, that is that is some spice for sure. Okay. Next up we got Uncage the Soul level three. Otherwise known as the third and fourth copy of the spells that you like. Uh, zero cost, three experience, spirit, and you may discard a spell or ritual asset you control. Play a spell or ritual card from your hand or discard pile, reducing its resource cost by three. Uh, this basically, as I said, it just says, hey, um, replenish the spell that you have in play. I'm happy with my 3.5 rating, and that's where I'm going to live again this year. I think the card is really sick. Uh, and I love playing it. I love refilling my Branica Thuggas. I, I love refilling my Divinations. I love refilling pretty much anything that I'm killing with and using charges. Um, and then in a pinch, you can also just play the card. But this changes from an, a way to... This, this changes Uncage the Soul from a way to reduce the cost of the spell you want to play and changing this instead to an additional copy of that spell. And I think that's a really good, powerful change. And I think the card's really sick because of that. And chat, you're going to give it a 4.2. So you're also in a very similar window. Uh, 
found this to be upgraded way later than I first thought. Not a prior upgrade one, I could, one could think. Uh, I agree with that. I don't think... I think you want to upgrade your... Okay, Russ, you gotta go. You gotta go, brother. I think you gotta upgrade your spells before you upgrade Uncage the Soul and then upgrade some other round stuff. But I, I'll look at upgrading this in, like, scenario... Five, six usually is where I would get to it. Probably, I'd wager. Maybe scenario four if my deck is, like... It has more fluff behind this card. But the card's really good. Ooh! On to the survivor skills. I think what this is, how you often have to play it for your first spell anyway, because resources. I don't think that's necessarily true. I think with, going back to this card, I think I would still just uh, play this card. I would just play my spell. <laughs> you just, it changes how, how your deck prioritizes playing spells. I would, I would remove, I think keeping Uncaged the Soul in your mulligan at level three is a mistake. Because, it, as I said, it changes the scope of the card. If you want to reduce the cost of your spell cards, just play Uncage the, Cold, uh, Uncage the Soul 0 and save on the experience. Uncage the Soul 3, in my mind, I, if I'm playing this to play a card, I'm not doing the card right. And I, why did I put it in my deck, right? In a pinch I can, but I feel like I'm failing if I do. All right. Makeshift Trap. I gave it a two. Honestly, I still kind of stand by that. I don't think the card's good. All right, customizable, one cost, uses two time. If Makeshift Trap has no time, discard it, attach your location. Each non-elite enemy at attached location gets minus one fight and minus one evade. At the end of the round, remove a time from Makeshift Trap. Improved timer, when you play, you may increase or decrease the timers. Tripwire, it only triggers if there are one or more enemies at the attached location. Simple, Makeshift Trap gains fast and play during any lightning bolt window. Poisonous, when you remove one or more time from Makeshift Trap, deal one damage to an enemy at attached location. Remote Configuration, when you play Makeshift Trap, you may attach it to a revealed connecting location. Net, not only enemies at attached location cannot move or make attacks of opportunity. And then there is the Dynamite, uh, when it has no time to, and is discarded, deal three damage to each enemy and investigator at attached location. So obviously Parallel Pete likes this card because he can cycle through it. Um... But I still don't like the card that much. I'm going to give it a 2. <laughs> uh, it's so damn slow. And the reality is, the majority of time in this game, you don't really have the ability to take your time to do things. It is very cool and very fun, though. I agree with Gabriel in chat. And it is very good in uh, Parallel Ash Can Pete. In all fairness, though, to that point, Parallel Ash Can Pete kind of just changes the evaluation on like so many cards that were previously um not good and he makes them incredibly playable like incredibly playable um and i think this is one that it certainly helps with it we've done uh we each built three decks around makeshift trap and it's it was fun, but we were all like, here's our janky deck. And I think that makeshift trap is like janky. Um, and it's, but it's really fun. Yeah, now I, I agree. I actually think net is probably the strongest part, uh, st strongest upgrade on the card. People get, I think people get caught in the dynamite. Chat, you guys are gonna give it a three. So you went from a 3.8 to a 3. But the net, I think net is like the one that really shines here. Stopping enemy movement is a very powerful effect. Something happened here. I thought we were in the survivor cards. No, we have Onyx Pentacle just like said. I'm, near, I'm not finished yet. All right, upgraded Onyx Pentacle. Okay, three costs, four experience. Evade, either use your brain or your foot in, uh, and get plus one foot for this evasion attempt. When you initiate, exhaust the place of doom. Uh, target enemy to connect in a location or location and get plus three skill value. If you succeed by two or more, ready and remove all doom from it. I mean, I'm, I'm boring. I'm still giving it a 2.5. Because my theory is... My theory generally across the board is that if you want the level zero version, 
I mean, you, you don't want the level four version for most of these mystic like spells or assets. You don't want the level, uh, you want the level zero version, you probably want the upgraded version. And you're not gonna want the upgraded version unless you have the level zero version in your deck. And at which point you're gonna eventually get the upgrade in. So I view them as in a pretty similar space. Notably, I'm curious to see, cause Chad did not, there was a, a whole five point, point five lower. And it's very similar over here. That's very interesting to me. It actually had a 1.7 again. Wow, so you guys got a 1.7 again. But most notably, 4 XP is so much. It's not actually 4 XP, it's 3 XP and that's easy. <laughs> um, it's a whole 1.5 lower than Onyx Pentacle Zero. I can, I can buy that. I mean, like, yeah, like it is, but it's, it's one of those things where like, to me, <laughs> I'll look at you funny if you're playing Onyx Pentacle Zero in your deck in the last scenario and you're just buying like, I don't know, like a Fearless or something. Um, like, like I'll, just, I'll just buy this, right? Because I mean, like it just makes you better at what you're doing, right? Like that's the thing, right? Like that's how I view these cards. I feel like, eventually you're looking at upgrading it and it's kind of the same thing i'm never playing onyx pentacle 4 on my own right on its own right this is like the guard dog 2 not getting that much better than zero on steroids i i agree i do agree that's why i'm giving them both like a a 2.5 here um because i don't think <laughs> i don't think onyx pentacle zero is I think that Guard Dog Zero is a very good level zero card. I don't think Onyx Pentacle is a very good level zero card. So to me, it's like, yeah, of course I'll eventually want to just spend the experience to get plus three skill value. Because like, what are you doing? Just being a boring person and just buying the usual shit at, at a certain point? Eventually I'm going to have my three experience and my down the rabbit hole to be like, yeah, okay, I'll upgrade my Onyx Pentacle. So that's why I view them very similarly. Albeit... You'll have I I won't be caught dead probably playing the Onyx Pentacles unless that I'm in a situation in which I am trying to play every card in the year, for example, because again these cards just do not interest me. Even the level zero version, like I can understand that you don't want to upgrade the level zero version, but to me, I mean you guys only went from a two point two. You guys aren't high on either card. Never mind. I'm gonna stop that point. You guys aren't. I mean, you went from a 2.8. I mean, like, a 2.8 to a 1.7 is a pretty big drop. It's Mr. Tom, hey there, just started this collection. I love it. Uh, I came from a full LCG Lord hey, of the Rings. I never thought this game would catch me even more. Hey, greetings from Germany. Hello from Canada. Hello. I'm glad you've been uh, enjoying the game. And thank you for the Twitch Prime subscription. Welcome to the Golden Table. It's a pleasure to have you. I mean, yeah, I, I definitely respect that the upgrade doesn't feel worth it to me but my reverse argument for that my reverse uno card is that why would level zero onyx pentacle be in your deck and if it is why have you not just spent your three experience because you probably have down the rabbit hole to do it right it seems just strange to me to run onyx pentacle zero um and have that ride throughout the whole campaign if you don't take it out of your deck for something else that's better. I don't know. It is a infinitely reusable sword cane, the level zero version. That is a point for it. But I like sword cane because it can also kill things. <laughs> that's why I like sword cane because it can also kill things. This is probably just me having to get past, but I've had this evade bias for like probably every year of my life playing this game. So um, I'm not, I don't think it's a bias anymore. And I think it's just a, a PBG Justin fact. I do not like evading enemies. You like Sword King because it's cool and stylish? It, it does look pretty cool when you're carrying the Sword King, not going to lie. All right, let's keep this going. I'm done talking about boring Mystic cards. Let's talk about End of the Road. 
End of the road. We both gave it a four last year. I, I think it's going to drop down there for me. I'm curious to see if it drops for you. But End of the Road is a zero-cost event. Fast play during your turn, only if the final agenda is in play. Draw a card, gain a resource, gain additional action, remove End of the Road from the game. The effect's good. Um, but I think it changed, in my mind, from a card that I always want to include. Instead, it has turned into... Is Dowsing Rod 4 also a little bit later? I forgot Dowsing Rod 4. Okay, so we're going to need to do Dowsing Rod 4 as well, chat. It looks like that didn't make the cut. Um, I'm going to give it a 3, I think. I'm going to drop it down a full point. It's certainly not the, like, staple level. Uh, staple level of the card. Uh, the text on the card is still very good. But I think the reality is, is that I think it's more campaign dependent than it is just generally good, in my opinion. Like, you can keep it in your hand and, like, just play it later. Chat, you're going to give it a 3.5. I think that's really good. Sorry, one second. I need to get Dowsing Rod 4 in here. But I think, like, I, I, I don't mind it being a dead card in my hand. The majority of the... Um, Right, Russ, you're back already. You just want food. One sec. I gotta feed this this freaking cat. I'll be right back. Okay, let's see. Remember, I was talking about. Yeah. So, I don't mind it being a dead card in my hand the majority of the game. <laughs> uh, mostly because it's like the design. I mean, yeah. Like I've seen people why people want a wild symbol on it, but it actually would like ruin the card. <laughs> the card is supposed to be dead the majority of the time, right? Um, but I think the reality too is that at a certain point, like you, when it's relevant is like when you're most set up. So the more actions is good, but I don't think it's one of those things that's just like, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm having a hard time putting what I'm thinking into words also because I'm trying to also save a picture of dowsing rod at the same time, but it's good, but I don't feel like I always need it, right? I'm always happy when I play it. I don't mind sitting on it when it's, when it's in my hand the entire time. But I don't feel like I always need this card. And when the um, card pool is getting better and better and better and better, um, it becomes harder for me to include a card unless there's a reason for it. And I think that, for me, this is a card that becomes more campaign dependent. When I know the agendas of a, of a, of a, of a campaign better, um, and when I know the campaign better and I know I'm more likely to hit this sooner into a, a, a scenario, I'm more likely to play it, you know? Uh, it's mostly just the fact that, like, in a perfect world, I want every card in my deck to do something 100% of the time, right? That's, like, what I want from my decks. And End of the Road, while it does something 100% of the time near the end, it's strange. It does something 100% near the time at the end, but I have to be forced into it due to other decisions i feel like i'm just saying the same thing over and over and over again basically i like the card i think the card is super sick um but i think you need a reason to play it and it's not just generally included i think i am going to bump it to a 3.5 though after thinking about it a bit more so uh i gave it a 3.5 and chat you gave it a 3.5 okay it's dowsing rod pretend that this is here and we're going to do Dowsing Rod next, because apparently I forgot a Mystic card in this. Um, I feel like I did not explain that end of the road well. Or I did, and I explained it like four times the same way. All right, so Dowsing Rod. Four cost, four experience. Uh, investigate either using your brain or plus one book for this investigation. When you initiate the ability, choose one. Exhaust Dowsing Rod and place one Doom on it. Move to a connected location and get plus two skill value for this investigation. If the investigation discovers the last clue, ready it and move all Doom. Um, 
I think I'm just going to ride the lightning. I'm going to give this guy a 3.0 again. Because that's what my gut told me, and that's what I gave it la uh, gave it last year. And that's also what I gave Dowsing Rod 0. And my points that I previously stated still exist. I prefer to play Divination. Yeah, I can agree with that, but I also think... Um, I also think that this card is not meant to be played in a deck where you're playing spells in your spell slots. You guys are giving it a 2.1. You guys gave it a 2.1 from a 2.6 last year. I, I think that's the problem. I think... <laughs> I don't want to sound rude here, but I think that... We're, uh, I think Arkham players are kind of stuck in the mud. And they're looking at this card as you're playing this in tandem with your spell slots. But I think this card becomes better when you're not using your spell slots at all. In two-player, mind you. It has a lot of things that I'm talking about. Uh, it, it has a lot of things that I was saying in Dowsing Rod 0. Where Dowsing Rod 4, also, you probably don't want to be playing this in higher player counts. Um... I don't know if the no spell slot deck is good enough for this card to shine. But if uh, that package does get better, then Dowsing Rod's going to go up. <sighs> I mean, like, plus three book to investigate is really nice. Like, I think the plus three book means that you're going to get whatever you want whenever you want it, baby. Oh no, I'm giving it a three. I think I think the Dowsrod effects are still good. Getting clues is really nice. Uh giving it a 2.1. I just I can't live in a world chat. I I I feel like I know I'm pulling a, a mass audience here, but I can't factor I can't like fathom a world where <laughs> A this is a 1.6 difference between these two cards. They're so similar to me. In like, I think like if you look at it in comparison to like what I was saying earlier with Guard Dog 2 and Guard Dog 0 uh, is actually like the worst way to approach this kind of thing. Because like in the Mystic class, things are different. Like you're looking at upgrading these assets if you're playing them. I don't know. I just think y'all crazy. That's all I'm coming down to. All right, let's get out of let's get out of Mystic Hell again. It brought me back in. Shadowlight, good card. Okay, two cost, fast, play before revealing a chaos token during the inve during investigation performing, and only if the difficulty of this test is currently zero. This test automatically succeeds. You discover one additional clue at this location and one additional clue at any location. I'm upgrading unnecessary stuff like observed and blood pact over dowsing rod three. That's fair. I can think you're a fucking idiot for doing that, but I'll think that I'll say that's fair. <laughs> Sorry, chat, I'm just not on your side for this one. I think you're kinda I think uh I don't get it. I, I think I think your evaluation is just wild on that one to me. Like, I can understand liking it less than Dowsing Rod Zero, but to like it, like, nearly a 2.0 less is wild to me. Uh, Shadow I'm giving it a 5 again. Uh, Card's Insane. It was a very powerful last year. To me, this was the, my pick for, like, one of the strongest cards within um, Scarlet Keys, and I'll stand by it today. Card's Insane. And Chat was very close. They give it a 4.9 on that one. Uh, went up a pull of 0.5, which yeah, I think is very fair. Cards in card is nuts. Card, I, I think it's like what one XP now. I think that's very fair. Um, like the thing that is like the the hard, the, the the craziest part about Shedalite is that you don't need to be going hard on. Um, you don't need to be going hard on the, um, 
on the tested zero to like <laughs> to do it you just bring your old key ring if you're playing a, a clue getting you bring your old key ring you grab uh you grab a clue from a two shot location then also grab a clue from a four shot location with victories you know it's kind of just nuts the power that this card has i think it's sh i think two xp is too much for this card um the the problem for me that with this card was that the design of um the design of Shedalite is a payoff. And to me, payoffs shouldn't be at level zero. The enabler should be at level zero. And this was the payoff to the archetype. So to me, in my gut, this should have been one XP from the get-go. Not too much. I think one XP is fine, but like for zero, it's insane. Oopsie, wrong way. Lifeline. All right, one cost, one experience, max one per turn, fast pwn, investigators turn would end. That investigator would take X additional actions during the turn. X is the number of skill tests they failed during their turn. Exile lifeline. I don't think this card's that great. I'm going to give it a 2.5. I think the card's fine. And like in Stella, it, it goes up. But I think it's just like... I, I'm not really looking at trying to fail my tests you know um i don't want to fail and like in stella i want to fail so like that's the thing i, I played this i think in tony <laughs> to basically just get more actions if i failed my fight actions this turn and that was kind of a fun play for it but that was definitely just kind of like for the lulls i didn't actually believe it too much Would it be okay as a support card in three players? I, I don't think so. When I played it, I played it with four players. And people just generally don't try to fail tests. Holy shit, chat! What happened? You guys went from a 3.8 to a 1.8. You guys dropped a full two points? Holy hell. That's a big drop. That's a big drop. Chat votes be harsh. Yeah, honestly, <clears throat> I mean, everyone, uh, we're just doing democracy, but. Feels like Justin's voice is going. I mean, I have been talking for almost three hours, so. We're losing it. We're losing it. 1.8 seems low, but. <coughs> this is the power of chat voting. You guys get your, you guys get to, to say your say. Keep forgetting to actually vote. No worries. <laughs> Excuse me. All right. Next up, we got Gumption. I gave this one a 5, and chat also gave it a 5. That's wild. I think the card's good. I don't think it's 5 good. Gumption, 1 experience, max 1 committed per skill test. You can make Gumption to any type of skill test. While Gumption is committed to a skill test, that test gets minus 2 difficulty. So you guys actually gave this a 5 last year. That's crazy. That's really impressive. That means everyone voted this card a 5. Uh, I think the card's good. Um, I'm happy to play it a lot of the time. I'm probably still going to give it a good rating. I think I'm still going to give it like a 4. I like the effect a lot in Survivor. Um, yeah, it's that, that Ezekiel, it's, it's really easy to put in your deck and it's really easy to want in your deck. And it also does really help with uh, Key Ring and Shuttle Light, as Dice Gods is saying. Uh, I agree, overrated at 5, but I think it's also just a good general Mythos protection card. It's basically like a bad Ward of Protection for Rotting Remains, right? Um, so yeah, I'm going to give it a 4. I still think the card's very impressive. And chat, you're going to give it a 4.4. Very nice. Baseball bat. Baseball bat level two. All right. Two costs, two experience. 
Uh, Della, two hand slots is an action fight. You get plus two fist for this attack. This attack deals plus one damage. If a skull or auto fail token is revealed during this attack, choose one. Either return baseball card, baseball bat to your hand after this attack ends, or this attack deals plus one additional damage. Discard baseball bat after this attack. Uh, yo, this card's sick. I'm still gonna give it a 3.5. I don't think it has like high power to boost, uh, like to compared to like some of the big melee weapons that exist in the game. Uh, I think like fire extinguisher in and of itself is also just like a card that's pretty damn sick. Um, but bat level zero carries itself very well. Probably laid up for me. That's crazy. That's crazy. It, the be able to like not have it break or have it deal plus one damage if you do want it to break. I I think you should pr upgrade your baseball bat earlier. If it's your weapon, you definitely should be upgrading that sucker sooner. It's a very good upgrade. Chat went down to a three point three. I can respect it. I can respect it. But, like, <clears throat> the control that you have... Because, like, imagine if your level zero baseball bat... If it, when you if, if you were happy with it breaking, it also just, like, brute forced an enemy. Like, if you change your perspective of baseball bat to that, it becomes a lot juicier of a card because of that reason. So... It's a spicy meatball um, for that. And also, like, if you don't want it to break, you can just return it to your hand. Notably, with all of this said, um, I do think there's a little bit of a, a caveat with Baseball Bat where you can only be playing Baseball Bat. I mean, you're, you're sorry, not only, but you're going to want to play Baseball Bat in an investigator who can also use his foot or their foot um, if the Baseball Bat returns to your hand right because if you're fighting a big enemy you're going to want to be able to like you have to have a plan for that enemy which certainly detracts from the baseball bat <clears throat> but it's just something you need to be aware of in your deck building yeah or soak the attack of opportunity to play another one yes yeah that's also a good way of going about it as well um yeah but i think evade is also good generally yeah it's it's one of those things where like i think the like i love it in silas i really like it in silas um, because he can evade really well too in a pinch. It's a great card though. That's what bandages are for. Yeah, that is true until, you know, you suddenly have one horror left on you and the enemy kills you, but bandages are really good for stopping the damage at least. Katya East Bank. Uh, three cost, two experience. She's the keeper of esoteric lore. Soaks for two and two. As a reaction, when you draw a non-weakness card from the top of your deck, before resolving any of its effects, exhaust, catch at East Bank, place that card face down beneath her and draw a new card to replace it. Uh, as an action, draw any card beneath catch at Asp uh, uh, East Bank. I called her Ass Bank. Sorry, dude. Uh, sorry. Uh, sorry, my dude. I did not mean to do that. Um. Yeah. She's fine. She's fine. Let me give her a 2.5 again. I think the reality is that survivors just have, like, better allies. But she has the decks for it where she's going to do better. Like, obviously, Dilemma decks. I think also just, like... Um... If you did play her and, like, if you weren't looking for a specific ally synergy and you just wanted to, like, filter your draw in a different way, I could see running her for that reason. I don't think it's particularly impressive, but I think the card is just, like, it's a good card. Um, good, uh, fine to good, sorry. I might want to say fine, but I don't think the card's bad by any means. I just don't think it's particularly impressive. Chat hates it. They give it a 2.1. <laughs> I mean, that makes sense. When you have to choose, you guys can't choose 2.5. Only I can choose 2.5. So when you have to choose between 2 and 3, it depends on where it sits in that spectrum for you. I think this is she good in Gloria? Uh, I don't think Gloria can play her, right? Because Gloria can play events and skills. She I don't even think she has Survivor for one of her options, or does she? She has Seeker, Rogue, Guardian. Yeah, I don't think she has Survivor in her kit at all. 
Uh, I think this is better for just draw filtering than for a Dilemma deck. I can agree with that too. Also just because I don't think Dilemmas are that sick. But that's just my opinion. I'm a, I'm a fucking idiot. What do I know? Old Keyring 3. Now this is a card. Now this is a card. Stuff that wins the power of cryptic writings you draw an upkeep under her. <laughs> That's sneaky. All right. One cost, three experience. Uses three keys. If there are no keys on old key ring, discard it. As an action, investigate. Your location gets minus two shroud for this investigation. If you succeed, remove a key from old key ring. And if this test difficulty is zero, discover an additional clue. Good card. Very good card. It might be good. Might be a good card. Uh, I think this card might be good. I'm going to give it a five. I think the card is nuts. <laughs> I think Old Key Ring is a very powerful card. Um, however, again, I think that Old Key Ring card effects like this exist and are, like, existing is good. Um, but I do think the problem is once again to be able to recur shit ad nauseum in the Survivor deck is kind of where things... What kind of pushes this card to be so po problematic? Wow, I don't even need to do the average chat. We got 13 votes of five. 13 votes at five, holy hell. Wow. Yeah, 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 okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, zero non-fives. It was only fives across the table. So we're both giving it a five. Um, uh, I do think this card does get bu bu uh, boosted up due to scavenging. I think if you could only play it, like, I, I think also, like, yeah, and then, like, if you're just playing this card fairly, it's pretty mid, actually, right? Um, but if you're playing it to abuse it, it becomes really, really, really powerful. Uh, good job, Survivors. I still think you were one of the most winning sets, uh, uh, cards of the expansion and i think this is no exception i wish there were more keys in the art than level zero that actually would be really funny i, I actually think that would be really funny fickle fortune uh three call three experience ma uh, max two dilemma per round Revelation, you must decide. Place one Doom on the current agenda. Each investigator heals a three damage and three horror. Remove a Doom from the current agenda. Each investigator takes one direct damage and one direct horror. Remove Fickle Fortune from the game. Uh, yo. This is an interesting card. I talked about this card recently <clears throat> in my Play All Card video. Uh, where I played this in the Daniela deck. Specifically to tech against Guardians of the Abyss. Um... However, the problem with this card is that it changes your mulligan forever. <laughs> like, if this card is in your deck, it alters your mulligan completely. Uh, so much so that I actually bought cards to take it out of my deck. And then I was very happy i actually paid xp to take this xp card out of my deck um i think the votes are actually very interesting for this one and i think it's very fair i'm gonna be dropping this down to a three i think yeah it basically it's like it, it basically puts a weakness in your mulligan unless you're playing soul sanctification it goes really hard with resourceful it does go very hard with resourceful um it's i don't like the card in the mulligan. And also, I mean, it also doesn't help that I was playing with a Vincent Lee as well. Who I would steal the healing damage and horror from him. Which certainly made it be... Um, certainly made it so that I didn't want to heal even more. But... It's not often that I've actually paid XP to remove an XP card from my deck. So it is worse than I thought. But the effect is still very, very good. Um, I gave it a 3 from a 3.5, and chat, you gave it a 3.4 from a 3.9. Good card, though. 
the hyperphysical shot caster. Or dare I say, the hyperphysical shit caster? <laughs> Am I right? I don't like this card. I don't like the design. I don't like the flavor. And that's kind of a uh, that's kind of it. Four cost uses four aether. If hyperphysical shot caster has no aether, discard it. As an action, spend one aether, resolve the manifest ability on of hyperphysical shot caster's current form. As lightning bolt exhaust hyperphysical shot caster and change its form. Uh, to one you've unlocked on its upgrade sheet. Oh, I love them adding reminder text. That's so sick. Uh, rail shooter. Uh, it allows you to fight. Fight with any skill. Deals plus one damage. Telescanner. Investigate with any skill. If you succeed, discover clue to any revealed location instead of your location. Translocator. Evade. Any attempt to evade with any skill before or after this attempt, you must move to a... You may move an investigator or anomaly enemy at your location to a connecting location or vice versa. Reality Collapser. Test any skill three. If you succeed, discard from play and a non-weakness treachery that is not attached to elite enemy. I like Reality Collapser. I think that's probably my favorite... Upgrade for the card? Let me get your votes in too before I keep reading. There's a lot of text on this card. Three, four, four, one, five. All over the board. Yeah, that's a good that's a fine rating from you, chat. I'm I'm digging. Uh Matter Weaver. Uh this allows you to choose an asset in your hand and test any skill X for X that asset's cost. If you succeed, play that asset at no cost. If etheric link, hyperphysical shock cast three to play with two additional aether. And empowered configuration while using a manifest ability, you get plus two skill value. Uh, Chad, you guys are going to give it a three from a 3.1, so you're pretty much the exact same way you were last year. So, I remember when this card was first spoiled. There was a lot of doom and gloom out there that this card was going to just neutralize uh, class cards. And it, I, I, I knew it wouldn't. I knew it wouldn't because none of the rates are good enough for it to actually like do it you know in the same way i think it's great for solo investigators probably i don't play solo it's the only thing i don't know um but uh generally it's outclassed by what you actually can do if you're in the role i think the exception to this is probably the reality collapser but I don't think a hand slot is worth four Alter Fates. Because if you need to remove four Treacheries from the board, that's bad, bad, no good. I think they a good job to make the abilities worse than what they would be in class. I do agree. Only exception, I think, is like... I mean, like, the gun on the fight is probably pretty close. But it's mostly just, like, it doesn't give you a boost to... So, you know, I, I agree with your point, actually. Because it doesn't give you a boost to your skill when you do it. Unless you put more experience in it. Also, you have to spend two experience for just, uh, like, a Colt. <laughs> Sorry, for a... Uh, um, a cult, yeah. <laughs> um, but I think that also what I like about this card, if I have to give some positives, because I, it's like two storm clouds and a rainbow. We, that's my new approach for this card, is that I like what it does for people who want to build crazy decks. There was the Rita deck that I did on the channel in a collab with um, Valentine, who the the thirty k deck series, which I think was kind of fun. It was like a scavenging deck and you were using the telescanner to just grab clues from anywhere on the board from your location. I think like that's a cool, um, I think that's a cool space for the card to exist in, but I don't think the card is that good. Um, I'm not going to give it a two though, because I think it has its function. And even though I have a bias personally against the card, I can't fault it to the point where I think the card is particularly bad because i think it has modes that are functional i just don't think i think that unless you do not have a class like unless you're playing this mostly in solo i wager or if you really need a real reality collapser but i think there's just other things that also just do it refine Refine is a three cost event. It's a double. So it's additional cost to play Refine, spend an action. Immediately mark a checkbox on an upgrade sheet for a customizable card you own, even if it's not a play, max once per game for each investigator. Uh, I'm going to give this one a 1.5 again. And I did actually, in this last year, used a Refine to upgrade a, a Runic Axe to get... 
more charred to get a, 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 an inscription on my axe that allowed me to take advantage of the game. And even then, I did not enjoy playing Refine. I think it's too slow, I think it's too expensive, and I think that the experience that you get from the scenario in and of itself is good enough. And I'd like, Delve Too Deep I like because it gives everybody experience. This just gives you experience at a very heavy cost. And I think ultimately it's not worth it, but I do understand why it was printed. And I do understand why people enjoy playing with it, um, but it is not for me. I do not think that I want to spend time doing this. I'd rather just win the scenario with my resources and cards and have a great time doing that. So I'm sticking at a 1.5 chat. You guys dropped it to a 2, so you were very similar. Similar to where you were last year. And I think we have one card left, and that's Flashlight. Sorry, I mean Flashlight. Flashlight 3. Okay. So Flashlight 3, 2 cost, 3 experience, uses 4 supplies. When you perform a skill test while investigating or attempt to evade, spend a supply, this test gets minus 2 difficulty. Uh, great card. I'm going to give it a 4 again. The Evade is really nice. Time Roller, how's it going? The Evade is a really nice addition to this card, both flavorfully and mechanically. I think that's a home run. That's a great win. Um, I think the card is, is very fairly costed. Uh, I think that you're not going to want it all the time, so it fills its hole really well without being too, like, overpowered. I like Flashlight 3, and I can see myself playing it in a lot of decks, and I'm going to keep playing it in the future, right? Uh, I like it. I like the card. The, ev the Evade synergy is really sick. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's just nice and balanced, isn't it? But it's still very good at the rate in which which it, it demands your attention. And chat, you guys going down to a 4.2 from a 4.6. Okay, that's it. It's done. It's finished. We have done this. Shall we see what our average difference was? So, we were actually... Chad, I think we, we deserve... We deserve a big applaud. Um, do I have the biggest changes? I think my... I think I have the biggest change if you include invest... No, no, no. We both have the biggest change. If you include investigators, I have Amina with a 2.0 drop. But mostly because I was rating the investigators differently. Uh, if we're not including investigators, you also, you'll have the biggest drop with a 2.0. My biggest drop outside of investigators was I think 1.5 on I just saw it. I think it was just kicking the hornet's nest. Oh, and also Power Word. I went up a whole 1.5 on that one. Yeah. So, but the biggest uh, two changes were Amina. I went uh, down to, and Lifeline chat went down to. However, um, uh, are there no... I mean, the biggest uh, increase was me for Power Word. I think, which was 1.5. The chat, what was chat's biggest increase? Let me just see if I can just scan through this and see. Uh, chat actually, no, chat only went like down. It looks like chat's biggest increase was a 0.9 on power word. So generally what we're learning is that chat, you guys overrated more than you underrated so if we actually uh, overrated slightly so if we look at the difference in averages i went from a 3.3 a 3.33 to a 3.11 so i dropped down 0.22 in comparison chat went from a 3.69 to a 3.30 so it was a 0.38 drop. So basically your ratings, chat, were, were like where I was in my initial rating. 
So you guys drop down to a 3.30 from a 3.69. And I went from a 3.33 to 3.11. Seems fair, yeah. And again, we were in like the 0.5. I mean, I think realistically, I mean, I, I think that's... I do think, like, I do remember saying, Chad, I thought you guys were, like, over a little bit last year. Uh, it turns out I was too, but we were still very close on the mark. I think that's pretty sick. Discuss Parallel Gym already? I did. That's how I opened the stream today. I hope it's discussed Parallel Gym at the start. I think definitely the... Um, the investigators certainly changed me I, I rated all the investigators very high maybe i'll do the investigators separate next year because i do think the investigators should be kind of separate from all this because they are they're just different when you look at them in comparison to uh to player cards sweet that's pretty sick so we're sitting in with a 3 to a 3.5 average of the cards. And I think that's that's kind of where you want to be, right? You want the majority of your cards to be good. Good to great, but not like fantastic or busted. If all of them are fantastic or busted, we're probably looking at uh, not every play style getting what they want. But with that, we are done. Huge thank you to all of our patrons for supporting the channel. If you want to support the channel, you can do so on our Patreon page down in the description. But in the meantime, that's going to be it for this video. And I'm excited to do this all again for Hemlock Vale. So get ready for that. Once we start seeing those cards start coming out, we're going to do this again and get our preliminary predictions in so we can revisit them again in a year from now. Because here's a dark secret. Time just keeps going and it doesn't stop. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a good one, and as always, a GG's.